fifth is a small mountain in Snowdonia, a classically comical cartoon mountain that on the top becomes a ridge running in a boggy line towards Snowdon. But on the heat of this day, I lay on my back on the flat, dried grass among the heather, as broken clouds hung in the sky, obscuring the blue, leaving only fleeting patches of bright possibility between the white. A warm wind blew through dry, hard stems of heather and scrubby gorse. Purple buds were about to break, to spill honey-scented air across the mountainside and in sparse grass, torn by sheep and razor winds. I spread my hands against the grass and felt the earth, warm and present, a breathing entity beneath my palms, and the voice I hadn't heard for a while was back, clean in my ears, sharp in the air through the rocks, soft in the clouded sky, a smooth ribbon of sound, like a heartbeat, slowing to the murmur of birds returning at dusk. We should go. It's getting late. We headed across the dry bogs of the ridge and then down towards the ruins of Rossith Quarry. Little over a century ago, this had been a thriving slate mine. The barracks and mine workings heaving with men and machinery. The roofs of the barracks are long gone and the walls are crumbling, but the sense of lives lived and lost is strong. A powerful, eerie sound emanated from the broken walls, almost like music. What is that? Is it wind in the walls? No, I'm not sure, but it sounds like Linkin Park. Sheltered behind a high wall, a small fire burnt, sending sparks up into the fading sky. A group of people gathered round, sitting, talking, Strains of the metal rock band echoing out from a small speaker around the empty walls. All right there, lads. Good spot for a party. Yeah, it's not bad. I could see Moth trying to work out how to take the conversation further. Is this like the Friday night spot then? Perfect for a gathering? We're here for Chester. Right, a birthday? Moth glanced at me, shrugging his shoulders. No, not a birthday. The men looked at each other, then at the ground, as someone changed the track to one I'd heard playing in the kids' bedrooms when they were teenagers. Of course, Moth clearly remembered too. Not Chester Bennington. Yeah, died yesterday. He was a legend, man. Nothing's going to be the same now. The troubled, tattooed, immense talent of a lead singer from the metal band Linkin Park, who'd been a big part of our kids' lives, so inevitably ours too. We're here to send him on his way, lift him up in the smoke and his words, the way he should go. We sat on the rocks with them, a group of young people in black t-shirts and piercings, tattooed as their idol had been, holding vigil in a ruined mine, on the Welsh hillside. The sky turned to night as the group moved around, talking, singing, drinking, their faces lit by the firelight from wood they carried up the mountain. Our lives, life, death, the movement of molecules from wood to air, it had all become one. Moth's lights were slowly going out. There was no denying that. But the electrical charges in his brain were finding their own route, making new pathways. For now, there was still enough power in his cells for them to keep searching, and all we could do was to help them on their way. All we are is an electrical charge, no more than particles, matter, antimatter, mass and energy. No different to a blade of grass or a spark from the flames, just energy moving in a never-ending flux. 
While moth's lights were still shining, we would celebrate every one of them and keep each burning in his night sky. We got up to leave, the final track playing from the speaker, the last of the flames flickering in the dark air as the fire